Hello students, welcome to the business law session for BBA 5th semester. So, we have completed here the first modules relating to the general principles. Relating to the general principles, I have completed here the first two modules, module 1 and module 2. Now the module 3 I am coming, module 3 deals with the specific contracts. The specific contracts and we have got a terminology for that. So a name is given to that. Now we used to use the word promisor and promisee. Proposer, proposee or proposer, offering. So like this the words were used. So we were speaking about the general principles of the contract. So now we are coming to another part of the study of the Indian Contract Act, specific contracts. So specific contracts we are going to study in module 3 which covers here the five important specific contracts. So as per your syllabus, five specific contracts have been given. Contract of indemnity, contract of guarantee, contract of bailment, contract of pledge, and contract of agency. These are the five contracts which have been prescribed as per your syllabus. So, today we are going to start with this and we will take the first here the specific contract that is contract of indemnity. The contract of indemnity we are going to discuss here today. It is a very small contract but where the question is after you complete the contract of guarantee then you have to make a distinction between a contract of guarantee and a contract of indemnity so there the main question comes so relating to contract of indemnity hardly you have to study only two sections section 124 and section 125 these are the only two sections related to contract of indemnity so on this you can expect only two marks but where the main question is, 10 marks question will be distinction between contract of indemnity and contract of guarantee. That will be discussed once I complete the contract of guarantee. Now I cannot here mainly mention about that here the distinction because you have not yet studied the contract of guarantee. So once you study that, we are going to this here make the distinction between these contracts and that's an important question. But here what the questions may be, two marks questions. Define contract of indemnity. Define contract of indemnity may be a question. Or they may ask you here who is an indemnity holder and who is an indemnifier. Indemnifier and indemnity holder or indemnified. Indemnifier, indemnified or indemnifier, indemnity holder. This may be a question. And what are the rights of an indemnity holders? So, who is an indemnity holder? You will study it and what are his rights? Section 125 is. So, it is a very small section. We will try to understand this section and what are who is an indemnifier and who is an indemnified. We will try to know it and what are the rights of an indemnity holder. These are the things what we are going to discuss today. Section 124 of the Indian Contract Act. So far what we have studied general principles we have covered it under section 1 to 75. 1 to 75 we have covered. Now specific contracts we are going to start which will be starting from section 124. Section 124 here we are going to commence the specific contracts. Contract of indemnity the definition is given in section 124. What it says? How the beginning is made? It is a contract. So first thing remember it is a contract. It is a contract whereby one party. So whereby one party. That is the second ingredient. Whereby one party promises to save another. This is the third ingredient. To save another from loss caused to him. This is the fourth by the conduct of promisor or any other person. So totally you have got five ingredients, five elements to understand the contract of indemnity. So it is a contract. 
So we will try to know the meaning very clearly with an example. If you read the contract here, it is a contract whereby one party promises to save another from loss caused to him by the conduct of a promiser or any other person. So this is the definition. You need not, uh, as I have told you, need not reproduce the definition. You can put this in your, your own words with an example. I will mainly explain it. So first we will try to understand these <coughs> five elements which I have given you. It is a contract. It is a contract means uh, here it should fulfill all the essentials of the contract mentioned in section 10. The elements mentioned in the section 10. So it is a valid contract. So when we are using the word it is a contract means it is a valid contract enforceable in the court of law and it will fulfill all the essentials which are mentioned in section 10 of the Indian Contract Act. This should be the first element. Whereby one party, one party promises to save another. So one party, usually in contract we will be having two parties. Where one party, for example X. X here promises to save another, that is Y. X promises to save another from loss cost to him. Loss cost to whom? Loss cost to Y. So whatever loss is cost to Y, here X has promised that he will make up that loss. He will save him from that loss. So here promises to save another from the loss cost to him. Cost to Y. How that loss has to be caused? By the conduct of the promisor. It may be because of the promisor himself the loss might have come to here Y. Or any other person. It may be any other person. So X has promised if any other person, for example, from Z, Y has incurred the loss, X has said that he will reimburse it. He will mainly here fulfill that loss. So it may be by the conduct of the probably here mainly the promisor itself or by here any other person. Promisor or by any other person. So this can be more clearly understood. So it is nothing but here it is the question of here saving another here one person from the loss to make up the loss if it is cost or to reimburse. Indemnify means to reimburse. To reimburse the loss sustained. So one party has sustained the loss and another party has mainly promised to reimburse that loss. And that loss has been caused to the party here either by the conduct of the promiser who has made the promise to make up the loss. By the conduct of the promisor or by any other person. So that loss will be made up. So we will take a small example and tell. X here says to Y. Here whatever loss will be caused to you. Here in the case which you file against Z that will be reimbursed. So Y is acting on the directions of a the X, remember this, on the directions of the promisor, so by the conduct of the promisor it is. By the conduct of the promisor. So, you initiate any here case against Z. Here, whatever loss is caused, here will be reimbursed. And X, here Y files a case against Z and he incurs a loss of rupees 1000. Here, the loss sustained is 1000 rupees. Now X has to reimburse this here 1000 rupees to Y because he has promised any loss sustained here against the Z in a case will be reimbursed and 1000 rupees is the loss caused to Y and so X has to reimburse. So the conduct, he has only given the directions. He has only given the directions and according to that he has sustained the loss. So it means it may be the promisor or by the conduct of any other person also. By the conduct of any other person. So that is here the loss is sustained you have to make up. So this is what is called as indemnification. Indemnification means to reimburse. To make up the loss. So it may be caused by the conduct of the here mainly promisor itself or by any other person. For example, here, if you take here A has appointed here B as his agent. A has appointed B as the agent. 
and B is working as per the directions of uh, the A. And any here the loss that is uh, sustained to B, any loss that is sustained to B in the course of the employment here with uh, A or while doing the work of A, he has done as per the directions of the A itself. So it is as per the directions means as per the conduct of the their promisor. Here the loss has been sustained. It is mainly the duty of the principal to reimburse it. So these are the examples you have to give. The examples are to be given here for that mainly the reimbursement. So anyone here who promises to reimburse the loss here of another which is caused by the conduct of the promisor or by any other person. I have given you both the examples here. In the first, the, here mainly by the conduct of here the third person that loss is sustained to him and he has agreed to that. Here it is on the mainly the conduct of the promisor itself the loss is sustained and he has to reimburse. Like this, here this is known as the contract of indemnity, indemnification, indemnify. Here that is what is the meaning of the indemnification if you analyze the section 124. And the person who promises to make up the loss is called as an indemnifier. The person who gives the assurance to another that any loss you sustain, you will be here that loss will be made up. He is called as an indemnifier. The promisor here is the indemnifier. The promisor is the indemnifier. That is, I told you in the beginning, specific words are used there now. Indemnifier. And the person to whom it is made, he is called as an indemnity holder. He is an indemnity holder. Or he is also called as an indemnified. Indemnifier, indemnified. Or indemnity holder. Popular word is here the indemnity holder. So these are the two parties what we have got. Indemnifier, indemnity holder. The two parties that are mainly there. These are the two parties what you see the indemnifier and indemnity holder. This is what you have to mainly understand who is, a, so in your examination two marks they may ask you who is an indemnity holder. So what answer you begin? In the contract of indemnity, the person who has a, here been given the promise whose loss will be made up here by another person, that another person is the promisor or he is the indemnifier. Here promisor, he has made a promise and that person is called as an indemnity holder. So definition there here is not given anywhere. So we have to understand based on the nature of those two parties and we have to give the meaning of who is an indemnifier and who is an indemnity holder. There is no as such a definition for this. And uh, section 125 mentions about the rights of indemnity. So rights of an indemnity holder. Who is the indemnity holder, you know who is the indemnity holder and what are his rights. Now before that you have to know, when does the indemnity holder has the right to claim here for the indemnification. Now for example, here, Y has initiated a here case as per, as per the directions of the X and he has sustained the loss of 1000 rupees, the court has awarded 1000 rupees here to be given to Z. Now the liability has become clear. The loss has been here mainly clear. So what is now Y has to pay 1000 uh, rupees to Z it is there. Now what is the right of Y? Y has he has to give that 1000 rupees and then claim it from X or he can directly ask X to pay that amount to Z. So in this case here right of the indemnity holder is that he has a right to ask the indemnifier to indemnify the loss directly to the person to whomever it is concerned. So to whomever it is concerned, he can ask directly here to give. So he, why can here maybe say to X that as for your promise I had initiated the case and the loss has been sustained, here you indemnify, here maybe give it to Z. So he need not discharge that liability. So directly here X has to discharge that liability. So that is the right here then. He need not here pay that amount and claim the amount from the indemnifier. So it is not necessary there. So that is and what he can claim, what all he can claim. 
So what rights he has got? He has got the right to claim all the here mainly expenses incurred here in the mainly the act he has done on behalf of the promisor or on the directions of the promisor or on the conduct of the promisor. Whatever act he has done, whatever expenses he has incurred. Now, for example, in this he has incurred thousand rupees has to be paid to him. That is not only the loss. Here, meaning first of filing the case, he has to pay the money to the lawyer. He has to incur certain expenses to file the documents. So these are all the expenses included. So these are expenses. He has the right to claim these expenses also. Along with that, the loss which has been here sustained as per the, the judgment of the court of that thousand rupees. So he can ask that thousand rupees to be directly paid to him, whereas the remaining whatever expenses he has personally incurred in filing the case, he can ask it directly to be paid. So he has got here two important rights. One right here where he can directly here ask the indemnifier to indemnify here the loss sustained by the other person. So when he, the, by the conduct of another party, the loss has been sustained to that another party the indemnifier can pay directly. This can be here the right of the indemnity holder. So when the liability becomes absolute, the indemnity holder can ask the indemnifier directly to indemnify the third party. But the second right is also whatever loss here the indemnity holder has sustained in filing the case against the third party, that whatever amount is there, he can claim it from the indemnifier. That right is also there. So these two rights are available to the indemnity holder. That is a section 25. So this is what you have to understand. What you mean by indemnity holder? Indemnity holder is nothing but to reimburse. To reimburse the loss. That is what is required. That is indemnity holder. See, if you look at this mainly the definition, you can find three important questions are there. What is contract of indemnity? First one. Second one is who is an indemnifier and who is an indemnity holder? The three here important question for two marks. It's a two marks question from your examination point of view. But as I told you, when I take in my next class, the contract of indemnity. So that here when you study the full contract of indemnity, then at the last we have to make the distinction between contract of indemnity and contract of guarantee. So that is most important question. It's a 10 marks question. Then. So just try to remember here you have to prepare these only three questions for two marks so that may be there for your examination. So in the next mainly the class I will be discussing the contract of guarantee. So we have to study what is a the contract of guarantee, types of uh, here guarantee, then we have to study here the rights of the guarantor. So against the principal debtor, against the surety, co sureties and against the creditor, we are going to study these all and then we are going to study the distinction between the indemnity and guarantee there. So guarantee is, so Contract of indemnity always should be read with the contract of guarantee. They are inseparable. They are just like the two faces of a coin there. So like this, contract of indemnity and guarantee, usually in your books you have got it written in this format itself. Contract of indemnity and contract of guarantee. So they are interrelated and you have to study together. That is what we are going to start in our next class. The contract of guarantee will be started. So remember, this is the first specific contract, contract of indemnity. We will continue this aspect in the next class. Thank you.